Hello and welcome to Story of the Day for Year 3 to Year 6 and we're going back to Grandpa's Great Escape by David Walliams and we got to chapter 43, Down the Hatch and were Jack and his grandpa trapped. Jack and his grandfather watched from the roof of Twilight Towers as the elderly escapees disappeared over the perimeter wall. Good luck, men, muttered the old man, giving them one last salute before they vanished from view. They were being chased by a gang of nurses who had rushed out of the building carrying torches and huge nets. Meanwhile, Jack and his grandfather were four floors up. The rope knickers had ripped. The drain pipe had been yanked off the wall. If they tried to jump, they would surely break every bone in their body. Jack could only see one way out. Down the hatch, sir. Oh, is it cocktail hour? Hour? asked Grandpa innocently. I'll have a gin and tonic, please. No, I mean, we have to go down the hatch. It's the only way out. Oh yes, of course, good thinking, squadron leader. I must recommend you to the Air Chief Marshal for a medal. The boy thought he could burst with pride. Thank you, sir, but there's no time to lose. Let's go. Jack took his grandfather's hand to guide him across the sloping roof. One slip and they could plummet to their deaths. But just as they reached the hatch, they spotted the end of Matron's bat baton snaking out of it. The end fizzed with electricity. Jack suddenly realised it was in fact a cattle prod, used by farmers to give cows an electric shock to move them in the right direction. But in the Matron's hand, it must be some kind of torture instrument. The little lady crawled out of the hatch and rose to her feet. As she stood on the roof, she held out the cattle prod aloft, her cape billowing in the wind. One by one, nurses Rose and Blossom forced their bulky bodies through the hatch too and joined her. With a sinister smile on her face, the wicked lady edged towards each, with a nurse on each side. I knew you were up to no good in the garden yesterday. There has been a mass escape tonight and you are the ringleaders. Him, please, I beg you, pleaded Jack. The escape was my idea. Actually, Commandant, it's me you should be sending to the punishment block. This young chap here had absolutely nothing to do with the plan. Silence, she shouted, both of you. And there was silence. Matron pressed the button on her cattle prog and a huge bolt of electricity shot out of the end. What are you going to do with that, Commandant? asked, yeah, asked Grandpa. I had this cattle pod specially modified to have 10 million volts passing through it, enough to knock a grown man out cold with one press of a button. Grandpa moved his grandson behind him protectively. That's barbaric, he exclaimed. The use of torture is forbidden on prisoners of war. The manic smile spread over Miss Swine's face. Just you watch me. With that, she poked Nurse Rose with the cattle prod and pressed the button. A white bolt leaped off its end. For a moment, the nurse's entire body was lit up by electricity. Matron took her finger off the button and the nurse fell to the floor unconscious. As Miss Swine chuckled to herself, Jack and his grandfather looked on, on in stunned silence. How could she do that to one of her own henchwomen? Even Nurse Blossom appeared nervous and shifted uncomfortably on her feet. Sorry, I just need to see that one more time, ventured Grandpa. The old man was betting on the matron falling for his ruse and taking out the other nurse as well. I'm not falling for that old man, announced matron. Nurse Blossom breathed a sigh of relief. Grab them, ordered Miss Swine. The burly nurse stepped over her unconscious colleague and surged forward with her thick arms. Outstretched, she made a lunge at them. The bell tower, cried Grandpa. Twilight Tower's bell was still ringing to sound the alarm. As they got closer, the noise became deafening. The bell was suspended in a little turret. Beneath it was a thick rope. Grab hold of the rope, shouted the old man. The problem was the rope was moving up and down rapidly as someone below tugged it to ring the bell. Jack looked over his shoulder to see Nerf Blossom advancing on them. Miss Swine was close behind, brandishing her cattle prod. There was no choice. Jack took a leap and seized the rope with both hands. Immediately, he felt as if his 
palms were on fire as he slid down the shaft at great speed. Ah! cried the boy. Jack looked down and saw his nurse Daisy below him swinging on the rope. Just as he looked up, Jack crashed on top of her. Bash! The nurse broke his fall and was knocked out cold in the process. Result, thought the boy. But as Nurse Daisy splayed on the floor, her wig came off, re revealing her shaved head underneath. On closer inspection, the nurse had stubble over her face too. She was, in fact, a man. Chapter 44. All sorts. Standing at the bottom of the bell tower, Jack heard a noise above his head. Looking up, he saw Grandpa coming down the rope at quite a speed. The boy quickly stepped aside out of the old man's way. Look, Wing Commander, she's a man, said the boy as Grandpa landed. Now it made sense why the nurses at Twilight Towers were so big and burly. Maybe they all were. Grandpa peered down at the man. Oh, well, it takes all sorts, I suppose. I trained with an excellent pilot named Charles, and at weekends he would dress up and call him Car Clarissa. Made an extremely pretty woman. He even had one or two marriage proposals. Sadly, there wasn't time to properly process this fascinating snippet of information right now, so they had to find some way out of Twilight Towers. Grandpa knew in the inside of the building was much better than Jack. Where to next, Wing Commander? the boy asked. I'm thinking, Squadron Leader, I'm thinking. But before Grandpa had the chance to do that, the boy cried, Look out! Jack yanked his grandfather out of the way as Nurse Bottom Blossom hurtled down with her, or perhaps rather his, hairy legs wrapped around the rope. Quickly, this way, said Grandpa, and the pair hurried off. Just as Nurse Daisy was coming too, Nurse Blossom landed on top of her, knocking her out cold again. Bash! In the collision, Nurse Blossom, Blossom's wig came off too. She was also a man. All the nurses at Twilight Towers must be, thought Jack. Nothing at this old folks' home was as it seemed. As the skin-headed, heavy, heavy scrambled to his feet, Jack and his grandfather reached the door. It was open and they quickly slammed it shut behind them. As Nurse Blossom, or whatever his real name was, pounded the door with his fists that were as heavy as bricks, Jack and his grandpa forced their backs up against it. The nurse was as strong as a bull and they couldn't hold him back for much longer. The cyborg squadron leader ordered Grandpa. The old man kept his back against the door and his grandson pushing the heavy wooden furniture towards in place, trapping Nurse Blossom and Nurse ba Daisy in the bell tower. The door began to slam into the sideboard and the pair dashed down the long corridor towards the front door. Just then, the sound of footsteps echoed down the stairs. It was a platoon of more nurses no doubt they are on their way to escape for, on their way to search for escapees. They're everywhere, whispered Jack, as he and his grandpa hid on the other side of the grandfather clock, whilst the nurses passed by. We'll never be able to sneak out. Well, in that case, I learned this at training camp, announced the old man. Our only hope is to escape, is to disguise as the, as them. Jack wasn't sure he had quite understood what Grandpa said. You mean? Yes, squadron leader. We must put on their uniforms. And to, on Monday, rather, we will pick up at chapter 45, wigs and makeup.